In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture beautiful, unique architecture photos with your iPhone. If you live in a big city or if you get to visit the city, architecture presents some truly spectacular photo opportunities. And usually it's not the building itself that make those special photo opportunities, but those are little parts or little details in these buildings that allow you to create the kind of photos where you can really focus on lines, on shapes, on geometry, and on different compositions that you wouldn't be able to capture without having that architecture in front of you. To show you exactly how this works and how you can capture those unique photos, we've come to the National Library of Latvia. And this building is shaped like a mountain of glass. And that's a reference to Latvian literature. So in just a moment, I'm gonna head inside and we're gonna capture a whole variety of different angles and viewpoints that aren't necessarily obvious. But before we do that, I want to capture one photo of the exterior of the building. So to capture that photo, I've decided to stand in this specific location. The position where you stand and the exact location you shoot from is always going to make such a big difference in your photos. So this specific spot is at about a 45 degree angle from the building. And that actually works really well if I want to capture the mountain of glass. But there are also some other reasons why I like this spot. So let me get out my iPhone and let me show them to you. Now, as I frame this up, there are a few things that immediately stand out here. One is the staircase in the foreground, and in particular, that hand railing on the left. Where that hand railing is placed is not an accident. That actually forms the leading line that's extending from the bottom left-hand corner towards the library. So that works really well. Now, if I was standing at a different spot, so let's say if I moved a few steps to my left, you'd quickly see that that staircase and the, that hand railing would no longer be that leading line because it would now be in the center of my frame. So I don't want that. I'm gonna move back to my right. Now, I also really like those stairs in the foreground. And on the right-hand side, you'll see those planes that are in a different orientation, so to speak, and they reflect light from the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame up this shot. And when we're working with architecture, and especially when we're working with strong, powerful lines, which is what we have here, it's really important that we are careful about how we arrange those lines in the frame. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see those stairs. And I have to be really careful because I want those stairs to be perfectly horizontal. And when I have the right composition, I'm ready to take a shot. Now, this shot wouldn't be possible if I was standing anywhere else. And this is something you're gonna see time and time again. When you're dealing with architecture and when you're trying to emphasize strong geometry, strong lines and strong shapes, where you stand as a photographer makes all the difference in your photos. Never just get out your iPhone and take the first shot you see. Always work the scene, walk around, until you find the exact right spot from which you can get the best possible shot. All right, that's enough for the exterior of the building. There are many more photo opportunities waiting for us inside. So let's go check it out. I've now walked inside the library and I'm standing on the ground floor and we have this huge room here that kind of looks like a classroom. That's one of the reading rooms of the library. But what really attracted me to this specific room and this specific spot is those stairs in front of me. I have essentially layers and layers of staircases and they're making this X shape. So I think I have a lot of potential here to create some really special photos. This is clearly a symmetrical composition because the stairs themselves and the layout of the floors is perfectly symmetrical. And in general, almost all buildings are built in a way that's very, very symmetrical. That's just how architects do things. And it's also really pleasing for the human eye to look at symmetrical structures. So this is exactly the center of the building. So if I want to be capturing those stairs, this is where I need to stand. But also, I have to decide how far I'm going to be from those stairs. So I can be closer to them or I could take some steps back. So that's another decision I need to make as a photographer. But here I have more flexibility. Uh, what I can do is simply walk back and forth until I find a spot where I have the best composition. Now the reason I picked this specific spot here is because of those plants here in the foreground. So this whole building is kind of gray, but we have these really beautiful bright green plants at the bottom. And I think if I just include a tiny bit of those plants at the bottom of my frame, that could potentially be an interesting photo. Let me show you. So I'm gonna open up the camera of my iPhone 
and here you can see the composition I was talking about. I think I'm gonna get the best composition if I can frame this up in such a way where I still see that top layer of lights. So now I've fixed the top of the frame just the way I want, but at the bottom I have a problem. I'm starting to cut out those plants. I don't want that, so what I need to do here is just take half a step back. That's it, half a step. If I do that, you'll see that now the problem is solved. I can get those plants at the bottom and I can show those lights at the top of the frame fully. So I'm gonna be really careful about how I frame this. I wanna make sure it's perfectly symmetrical. If the composition is just a tiny bit wrong, it's not gonna be as good. So that's why I have to be really, really careful and really patient about how I frame this. And I think this should be the frame. Now, if you're struggling to get all the lines perfect in the image, you could, of course, crop the image. So you could capture a slightly wider photo and then crop it in later. But still, if you can, it's better to capture it perfect in the camera because that way you get the fullest resolution. And also, cropping won't save you if you're not standing exactly in the center of the building. And if you look at the photo we just captured, it looks absolutely spectacular. It's perfectly symmetrical. I have those beautiful green plants at the bottom of the frame. I have just a little bit of space below them, not too much. And at the top, I have those three X-shaped staircases, one on top of another, in a perfectly symmetrical composition with all the lines leading the eye of the viewer towards those staircases. I'm really happy with how the shot turned out. But of course, I'm not done yet. The most important part of the scene are those stairs in front of me. So what would happen if I just captured the stairs? So if I now switch to my 2x, my telephoto view, you'll see I'm much closer. And also the framing now looks completely different. You just see those stairs and all the lines that are leading towards the stairs. So this is perhaps even more powerful as a composition. I'm gonna be careful to frame this up exactly right where the shot is perfectly symmetrical. I'm gonna be really careful with the bottom and the top edges of the frame. And when everything lines up, I'll be pressing the shutter. Now look at the images we just captured. These look absolutely stunning. We have three X-shaped staircases, one on top of another. We have those strong leading lines that are all leading towards that. I think this makes for a really beautiful shot. But I'm not done yet. This is a big building. I think there are many more photo opportunities. So what I wanna do next is head upstairs and see what else we can find here. Okay, now I've come to the second floor of this building and this time I'm facing in the opposite direction. So that interesting X-shaped staircase is actually behind me. Once again, I'm standing exactly in the center of the structure because that way I can get that beautiful symmetrical shot. Let me show you. If I open up the camera app, you'll see that I have that symmetrical composition I was going for, but it's not that interesting. And that's because I only see three floors from this point of view, but there are many more above me. So what would happen if I switched to my 0.5x? And look at that. At 0.5x, I can see so much more. I can see many more floors and I have a shot that has really strong, really powerful repetition. Now, if I go up more, you'll see that I have these extra windows at the top and those floors that are repeating kind of end at the top. If I want to create a really powerful repetition shot, I want to create an impression that those floors never end, that there are many more above. And if that's what I want to do, I cannot really reveal the point where the top floor ends. So I think I got that symmetrical composition, so I'll go ahead and press the shutter. And now if we look at the shot we just captured, I think it worked out exactly the way I envisioned. We have all these strong lines coming from all the sides, leading towards the center of the image. And in the middle, we have this strong repetition. I'm not revealing the end of the top floor, so it kind of looks like this repetition is gonna go on forever. And that makes for a really powerful shot. So now I'm standing in front of this giant bookshelf and that thing is absolutely huge, but I got a bit of a problem. The top half of the bookshelf is not illuminated while the bottom half is illuminated. So if I frame up a shot with my iPhone, you're gonna see that the top doesn't really look so good. 
What I'm gonna do instead is pan my iPhone down and now what I have left is all the illuminated books. And I also have some of that room at the bottom, but that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the composition just a little bit. You don't always have to do this, but if you can have strong lines originate right from the corner of your frame, that tends to work well in photos. Right about here is where I get the best framing. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. So if we now look at the shot we just captured, I think it turned out exactly the way I wanted. It's a really simple shot where those books are really prominent. I only have the illuminated bookshelves and I frame them up in such a way where the impression you'll get as the viewer is that those bookshelves never end. And that's the kind of impression I want to leave here. Try to find a kind of framing where you can simplify the shot so that you only keep the good parts and the parts of the scene that you don't need, you can simply eliminate from the frame. If you do that, your photos are gonna become so much better. Okay, so now we're almost at the top of the building. And since this is a library, it has these really interesting sun diffusers at the top. So those big triangle-like structures that kind of look like falling knives, those are the diffusers. They present a great photo opportunity because I'm always looking for lines, shapes, and geometry that I could use in my photos. I'm doing it whenever I'm shooting with the iPhone. But if I'm taking photos of architecture specifically, then I'm definitely on the lookout for strong lines and strong shapes that I can incorporate in my photos. So if I open the camera app of my iPhone, this is already looking great, but I think I could try to simplify the shot a little bit more. So there are two things that I see that I don't really want to see in my frame. One is that horizontal line that just kind of goes through the image that I don't really need. And also at the bottom left-hand corner, you can kind of see where those uh, diffusers end and there I have a different kind of light. It's a different color and I don't really need this. I want the shot to be as simple as possible. I'm just gonna pan my iPhone up like this You'll see that now I've pretty much eliminated both of those distractions. And what I have left is those beautiful diffusers at the top. And I think this is the shot that I need. Now, if you look at the image we just captured, we have those repeated diffusers that create a really strong, really powerful geometry that's repeated many times over. And also the light that's shining on these structures is really special. If we convert this image to black and white, and if we increase contrast a little bit, that light is going to look absolutely stunning. So what I've done here is I've created a composition that's all about those diffusers. I've also eliminated everything else that I don't need. And the more you can simplify shots like this, the better they're gonna turn out. Now I'm almost at the top of the building. So let's head upstairs and let's see what those diffusers are gonna look like from the top floor. Now I walked one floor higher and those beautiful diffusers I talked about before, from here, they stand out even more. Let me show you. Now I'm at my 2X, my telephoto view, and you're gonna immediately notice how those diffusers pretty much look like falling knives. I really like this perspective. And you're also going to see how at the bottom of the frame, there's this piano that's kind of framed in between those triangles. And I framed it there on purpose. Now, if you look at the frame more carefully, you're gonna notice that I have two layers of diffusers. So I have some that are closer to me, and those are the ones at the top, and then I have others that are further away. So if you look at the two top left triangles, you're gonna see that they continue in another triangle. So I have a triangle that leads into another triangle, and that only happens at this spot. If I move just a little bit to the right, this appears. If I move half a step back to the left, that composition comes back. I'm really happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take another shot. But I'm not done yet. These diffusers are so special that I'd like to take some more photos of them. So while I'm here, let's see what else I can come up with. Okay, now I've walked just a few steps to my left. And a few steps is all it takes to get a completely different scene in front of me. Let me show you. Now I'm still in my 2X, my telephoto view, and you'll notice that on the left, I have this strong repetition of those diffusers, while on the right, I have this little window, 
which is also a nice compositional element. And at the top, I have this really strong texture. I like how these elements work together in the frame, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. And if you look at this image now, in this photo, pretty much everything is taken out of context. You no longer really see that these are big triangle diffusers. You no longer really understand what's happening. All you have in this image is geometry. And if you can find strong shapes or lines or other geometrical objects and combine those in the frame, that often will result in some really special photos. But while I'm standing here, I think there's another photo opportunity if I simply rotate my iPhone horizontal. Now you'll see that on the left, that repetition really starts to stand out more. And I'm gonna choose to eliminate that window on the right. And now I have a really simple composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. So if we now look at the photo we've just captured, it is really interesting and really unique. You can no longer tell what this is. All you see is strong lines, textures, and repetition. So we have those strong lines that repeat on the left, as well as the texture at the top, but we don't see anything else. I've simplified this shot so much that everything that's not necessary, everything that's a distraction has been removed, and all I have left in the frame are a few really strong geometric elements. If you can do that in your photos, you're guaranteed to get some really unique results. So from this spot, and from this spot only, I can see something really interesting through that window. But you can't really see it because it's overexposed. So what I'm gonna do is tap and hold my finger on that window until the letters A, E, A, F lock come up. I'm gonna use that sun slider next to the focus rectangle and I'm gonna swipe it down to make the image darker. And as I do that, you can see that church appear inside the window. So that window has actually been built to perfectly show that church. It's a really interesting touch that the architect has left in the building. So I'm gonna make sure I frame this up exactly how I want. Also on the left-hand side, I wanna make sure that those lines are perfectly vertical. I'll go ahead and press the shutter. Now we're almost finished at the library. We've captured so many interesting photos. On our way down, we headed to the stairs. That's what we'll be doing next. We'll be taking photos of this beautiful staircase. If I want to get all of them in the frame at the same time, the first thing I'll need to do is switch to my 0.5x, my ultra-wide lens. And now you can see those stairs are coming from the bottom right, going all the way through the left-hand side. So it's a complete circle. And that looks good in terms of composition. So I'll go ahead and press the shutter. Now, one thing I really like about this photo and about these stairs in general is those beautiful steel walls. They reflect light and that actually looks really interesting in photos. So I'm happy with the first photo we captured here, but let's see what else we can get. If I point my iPhone down, look at that. Now you can see all that staircase leading all the way down, all the way towards the ground floor. And we have this spiral-like composition that looks really, really amazing. I'm really happy about how this is turning out. So I'm gonna carefully adjust the position of the iPhone so that only the things that I need are in the frame. And once I'm happy with the composition, I'll go ahead and press the shutter. This is absolutely spectacular. But now there's one more thing I'd like to try and that is capturing the same scene using my 2x view. I'm gonna to switch to my 2x view, and now look at that. You'll see that the scene got compressed together, so I have a narrower view, and that creates a more interesting, more unique perspective. From this point of view, you're gonna see that I've essentially eliminated everything that doesn't belong. So now we have a really simple, really clean composition with just the stairs and nothing else. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. You'll see that we have this really strong geometry here. So we have a central composition that's symmetrical, which is important. And because of that 2x telephoto view, we've actually compressed the scene together. And that actually emphasizes the repetition even more because all the repeated elements become closer to each other. And that works really well here. So there you have it. This is how you can take really interesting, really unique architecture photos with your iPhone. You're not just taking photos of buildings, 
Instead, you're looking at lines, you're looking at shapes, you're looking at geometry, and you're trying to arrange them in your frame in a way that looks pleasing to the human eye. And that's what photography is all about. Don't settle for the first photo you see, keep working the scene, keep experimenting with different angles, different viewpoints, different perspectives, just different photos. And the more you do that, the better your architecture photos are going to be. This video was a free preview of my iPhone Photo Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to take the kind of photos that will leave your friends and family speechless, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Photo Academy. You'll find a link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now, and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.